Welcome to our lecture online, and here's another example where photochemical reactions are the basis for existence of life on the Earth. So in the previous example, we showed you how the nitrogen molecule, being a triple bonded molecule, requires an enormous amount of energy, almost a thousand kilojoules per mole, in order to dissociate, which means that it can absorb many of the very, very energetic uh, photons coming into the atmosphere, like gamma rays, x-rays, and the short-wave radiation of uh, UV. Notice that any molecule that is shorter, that has shorter wavelengths of 126.6 nanometers, will get absorbed because energy will be used to dissociate the nitrogen molecules in the atmosphere, which of course are the most abundant molecules. This is almost 80%, about 78% of all the atmosphere's nitrogen gas. But there's still these three types of UV radiation that seem to make it through our atmosphere. So how are we protected from those? Well, it turns out oxygen, being the second most abundant molecule in the atmosphere, is a double bonded molecule. It requires 499 kilojoules per mole to, to, to dissociate, and we can figure out from that what type of photon will be absorbed from space when the oxygen molecules turn from oxygen gas like this in its natural state into the atomic oxygen like that. All right. Here we have the energy of the photon is equal to h times the frequency. That's Planck's constant times the frequency. And since frequency times wavelength equals the speed of light, we can replace frequency by speed of light divided by lambda. So this is h times c over lambda. And then if we solve this equation for lambda, we can say that lambda is equal to h c divided by the energy of the photon. So now what we have here, we have two constants, Planck's constant and the speed of light, which is known, and the energy of the photon, which can be figured out by using this number right here, which is the energy required to, to, to dissociate a whole mole of this gas, divide that by Avogadro's number to get the energy to dissociate a single molecule. So the energy for one molecule of oxygen gas, and let me write that a little bit better so it doesn't get confusing, so for one oxygen gas like that is equal to, we take the amount of energy required for a whole mole, 499,000 joules per mole, and we divide that by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole. Notice that the per mole disappears, and now we have the energy per molecule. And with a calculator, we can get 499,000 divided by 6.02 e to the 23 equals, and it's 8.29, 8.29 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Oh, not 18, but 19 joules. There we go, 19 joules. All right, so that's the energy required to dissociate a single oxygen atom. And let's see. If we take that number and plug it in here, we can figure out the wavelength of that, of that energy that can be absorbed. Remember, this is the photons coming in from space that react chemically with the atoms in the atmosphere. So we have 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we divide the whole thing by the energy of that single photon coming in, that will have enough energy to break up an oxygen mo molecule, which is this energy right here, which is 8.29 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So what kind of wavelength is that? Let's figure it out in just a moment. So times 6.626 e to the 4 minus times 3 e to the 8 equals, and it has a wavelength of 240 nanometers. That means any molecule that makes it through that doesn't interact with the nitrogen atom because it didn't have enough energy to dissociate nitrogen will come in and hit any molecule that has, or any, um, I'll take that back, say it again. So any photon that makes it through the atmosphere and doesn't interact with the nitrogen atom because it did not have enough energy to break up a nitrogen atom, the triple bond of nitrogen, will make go through and if it has a wavelength of 240 nanometers, with other words, energy high enough to dissociate oxygen gas, it will hit an oxygen molecule, break it up, and get absorbed that way. So that means that part of this, let me use a different color, part of this will be absorbed by the oxygen atoms 
so down to 240 nanometers so any wavelengths coming in that have that are greater than 240 nanometers like 250 260 270 nanometers which means they don't have enough energy to break up an oxygen molecule that will continue to go through the atmosphere and potentially reach the earth and if that were the case those photons coming in with this kind of energy for, with UV radiation would make it virtually impossible for life to exist on the earth so there must be another form of protection against photons that come in that have wavelengths that are longer than 240 nanometers but still too short to, to be safe for us so anything that is shorter than 400 nanometers and longer than 240 nanometers will continue to through the atmosphere and not get interrupted by the breakup of nitrogen or oxygen so how do we get protected against that? Well, come and look at our next video and I will show you.